What's up everybody? Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and he will appear in this last house because he must appear here, right? Because this is the last of all the houses. Yes, yes, yes. Today we are going to discuss or we have already discussed. Time is separating. About the 12th house, about planets placed in the 12th house, about what to do if we have three planets, four planets, five planets, six planets, or even if you do not have any planets placed in the 12th house, all right? So if you are new to the channel and you have still not subscribed, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation, then please approach me through my Vedic Renaissance website. And if you like this video, then click the thumbs up. And I'm very happy that so many of you uh, like the video which I made on sixth house. Tomorrow I'll be making another video on combined all the 6, 8 and 12 houses. Okay, and if you have any other questions, queries or comments, then please let me know in the comments. And if you want me to make any other video, then also kindly let me know in the comments. Okay, so now what is the 12th house? Everybody is concerned. Oh my God, I have this planet. I have that planet in the 12th house. What to do? And this is universal for all the planets which are placed there or even if no other planets are placed but at least the 12th lord will be sitting somewhere right so this holds true for all the 7 to 8 billion people who are residing in this earth because they have a 12th lord it is going and sitting somewhere right okay so what is 12th house 12th house is the house of laws that is the first criteria through which you judge the 12th house because it is the loss of the lagna. Yes, it is the house of exit. It's the final house where everything ends. That is why it is also the house of sleep. It is also known as Shaya Bhava, the 12th house. Because it is directly opposite to the 6th house. 6th house is the house of work. So when you get tired after working, you go and sleep. Like I am going to sleep now. <laughs> okay. And it also represents the bedroom and it also represents inner chambers hidden things, hidden enemies, sexual encounters also. All these things are represented by the 12th house. All right. Now, 12th house also represents moksha, spirituality. It also represents foreign lands. Some people say it also represents multinational companies, multinational organization. Well, that is true because if you consider them in different countries, in foreign lands, then you can take 12th house for that also. But, Primarily, it is the house of loss. So, if there is any planet situated in the 12th house, that planet will give you some kind of loss. Okay. That means, before that planet gives you a blow, <laughs> you only go and lose some of your energy in the form of money maybe or any other form basically. What do I mean by this? I simply mean to say, suppose you have any planet placed in the 12th house. It doesn't matter whichever planet it is. It is an indication that that planet, the Karak Tattvas of that planet will try to pull some of your things from your life. Yes. And then by that, it will try to create or give you a blow where you lose something. It can be anything, losing your health, money, relationships, your well-being, your peace of mind, anything. It is not only money. Loss is not only money. Loss can be multifold. It can be by any means. So that means everybody in this planet living today should go and do donations. And this is not that kind of donation. Okay, today is Janmashtami, Lord Krishna's birthday. So oh, I have gone to the temple. I have given 10 rupees. It is not like that. We should monthly do some donation every month. Yes, that's the thing which my Guru Maharaj had said to me that wherever, whenever, however you get money, 10% of the money you should always donate. See why? There are many reasons. Because you don't know from where the money is coming. It can be black money, white money, green money, blue money, any color money. <laughs> so if you use that sinful money, it can be tainted with sin. Yes. Now I'm not talking of the note here, but in general, money is dirty. Dirty doesn't mean it is bad, but 
it can come from sources which are not very good yes so that means when we go and give some donation that is called yagya in gita lord krishna says the concept of yagya is described yagya means sacrifice sacrifice means to give away something which we do not want to give should i repeat sacrifice means giving away something which we do not want to give yes so that means when we give away something which we love the most it can be anything for some people maybe giving up meat is millions of times more better than giving up money yes giving up money doesn't mean you become a sanyasi i am saying giving donation monetary wise if you can't do that then give up something which you love very much yes suppose you are obsessed with smoking <laughs> then try to give up smoking if you are obsessed with eating meat then try to give up eating meat if you are obsessed with something else then try to give up that or if you are obsessed with money try to give some money yes in the temple especially or what you should do is if you can't give money or if you cannot leave anything which you love if you are so obsessed then at least what you can do is you can go and help other people because see basically when you are helping others without getting anything in return you are losing energy right that's what is happening so that means you can always go and help people in general help the society help this world and what's the biggest level of help which you can do the biggest help that you can do to anybody is to take that person close to his or her original father that is god so when you distribute spiritual knowledge in the society that is the greatest help that is the greatest welfare activity that you can do that's the crest jewel of all the charities which are performed because lord krishna says in the gita that one who gives this message to others is most dear to me so if you want to know what makes god obsess about you yes then it is spreading spiritual knowledge and when you help others by giving spiritual knowledge then they will realize that we are not this body we are spirit soul we are atma yes and by that their materialistic life will be stabilized automatically in general and then they will find happiness content peace joy within yes by that you will know that your karma related to the 12th house is going because see any planet sitting in the 12th house is an indication that something of that planet whichever house that planet is ruling whichever natural significations that planet controls something of that we have to let go yes because directly it is directly opposite to the 6th house of expectation so now you see the 6 12 dynamics play here so that means either we give some charity monetary wise some serious charity it is not okay uh, one day i go to the temple and i give 10 rupees no it's not like that If, as as i said one thing which i do is whatever money i get uh, as my guru said donate 10% of that money every month irrespective of any other things of course that may be subjective to somebody uh, depending on their earning but sometimes people tell me oh i am earning only this much when i earn that much i will give more donation see it doesn't work like that i wish it worked but it simply doesn't work like that because donation is not about the quantity it is about the mentality should i repeat donation is not about the quantity it is about the quality <laughs> it's about the mentality it is the quality of the consciousness which you have while you are giving it because for a millionaire he may have a billion rupees or a million rupees and for him one person can be thousands and lakhs yes but suppose a beggar is earning only 10 rupees in a day and he is giving uh 20% of his money he is only giving 2 rupees right but still the percentage is more <laughs> so god will be more pleased to get his 2 rupees than to get the 1000 rupees of this millionaire because his percentage is very less yes and of course now somebody may say oh why does god love to take our money see god is lakshmipati lord vishnu is lakshmipati he doesn't need your lakshmi all right 
So don't think that God is snatching away your money. So never ever think like that because how much can you give to God? <laughs> God is not snatch, snatching away our money. God, what he does is he's a very beautiful father. What he does is he keeps because he knows that we have such wrong habits that if we do not give donations, we will use that money for drinking, for smoking, for doing all sorts of nonsense in this world. Yes. And then we will simply degrade our consciousness. So that is why God has made a law. Okay, 10% you give to me. <laughs> so now what happens when you give donation, that money which you would use for wrong activities, that money is now gone from you. So now you have a, you have less amount of money. So now you are very cautious. Okay, I have to use it the right way. Otherwise, I will run into financial trouble. So God wants that you stay protected. And then he keeps piling that money up, up, up. And then in your next lifetime, he will give it back to you. Yes, that is why you see so many people are born as beggars and somebody are born in multi-million dollar families. How is that? That is because they have given to God so much that now in this life, God is giving them back. God doesn't eat your money. Don't worry. Don't think that if you give something to God, he will uh, eat it up. So don't think like that. Of course, they may show all this. Uh, nonsense in some uh, Bollywood movies but uh, that's for the ignorant uh, people to rejoice on yes that's how they want to make money and it's very easy to fool the public so make some movie that oh God is snatching away your money and, and then everybody believes them yes see how the foolish see how foolish this public is of this world okay or you can go and help somebody yes exert your energy somewhere in helping others because see if there are planets in the 12th house, even if you are not doing that planet will take from you. So it's like before the police comes and uh, put, puts the handle on your hand that yes, you have to go now with us to the police station. Better you only go and surrender, sir. I did, I did this mistake. I am surrendering. now. Yes, that is how the 12th house works. And the another thing is 12th house, if you see from the Kendra placements, it is the fourth house from the ninth house. Yes. Now what is fourth house? Fourth house is the house of happiness. People ask what is the difference between the ninth house and the twelfth house. The difference is ninth house is the house of rules, regulations, law and the following of the scriptures. But until you gain happiness out of that. Why happiness? Because fourth house is the house of happiness. So the ninth house is nothing. But the beginning of spiritual knowledge, yes, that's not the end of it all. The end of it all is the 12th house. That means when you are taking spirituality inside your heart, yes, which is the 4th house from the ninth house, then you obtain moksha, liberation, salvation, which is the 12th house. What does it mean? It means that Whenever we are practicing uh, spirituality, we should do it wholeheartedly. We should not just do it for the sake of doing. Like in India, so many people I know, they are born in Brahmin families, but they are cursing their parents. Why did we get birth in this family? Damn, we can't eat meat. It's not allowed, right? I mean, for some families. <laughs> there are still so many families who are so-called brahmins and they will eat meat and i'm not going into that debate here but what i'm saying is cherish your fortunes which you have cherish the tradition which you have don't just just because somebody is speaking something that oh you become independent when you eat this when you break laws it doesn't mean you be stupid like them yes so doing spiritual activities for the sake of doing yes Checking mobile, checking Facebook and chanting mantra. Om Namaha Shivaya. That is not going to give you results. See, imagine. Take the example of a boy and a girl. It's very easy to explain with this. <laughs> that is why I always, I always take this example. Imagine you have gone to meet a girl or you have gone to meet a boy. Either ways. Then suppose you go to meet the girl. And the only thing the girl is doing is she's checking her WhatsApp or Facebook. Then you are wondering, you could have checked that without me also. Why did you call me? Yes. And then you are wondering, oh my God, why did I waste my time today? So imagine how God would feel if you would behave like that with him. 
yes imagine how you would feel if somebody would behave like that with you <laughs> when you are chanting some mantra what it means basically you are invoking the presence of god mantra is nothing but invoking the presence of god in our lives so when we invoke the presence of god it is like we are invoking god himself and then if you are thinking oh will my ex boyfriend come back will my ex girlfriend come back oh that girl is looking so beautiful oh that boy is so handsome oh how how will be my husband how much rich he will be when will i get this new job that is like you are sitting with your girlfriend or with your boyfriend and then she is speaking something and then you are like mm mm oh what did you just say <laughs> imagine how you would feel if your partner would do like that you would not like it right so similarly god also doesn't like so whenever you see that people say oh i have done this mantra for not 10 years it has not given any result like recently i had talked to one of my friend he said that i was chanting one mantra one mala and it didn't give any result so he said in hindi na utha ke mantra ko phek diya maine i don't know how to translate it in english there's no translation for this exactly it's like he said now i have thrown out that mantra from my life because it didn't work no no sir you have not thrown out the mantra god has thrown you out <laughs> you have no power to touch the mantra also the mantra has thrown you out you have not thrown out the mantra <laughs> So my dear sir if you think that you have thrown out the mantra you are so powerful that you take a mantra of of god and you throw it you are the biggest fool to live in this planet i don't know if he's seeing this video he has subscribed to my channel also anyways so that's what i am telling here so if your girlfriend your boyfriend will not like when you are doing uh, sit sitting with them and uh, hearing but your mind is somewhere else yes you will have a break up probably if that continues all the time <laughs> how will god feel if you do it right your mother will not like it your father will not like it then why will god like it because god is also person ultimately so do not do spiritual practices just for the sake of doing do it with all your heart and soul which is the fourth house by that you will realize that my spiritual life is improving and then this dreaded 12th house does not become this dreaded so called terrible house of losses because then what happens you become very happy with your spiritual practices that is why this very famous song is there in india right ai se lage lagan mera ho gayi magan <laughs> mira bhai she was one of the great 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 devotees of lord krishna so she was so much absorbed with all her heart and soul in lord krishna that she forgot everything you go and tell to me i suppose mira bhai was sitting next to me na imagine <laughs> and then i would say oh what do you think how good this girl looks she will be like come on forget her <laughs> when god is there why you need all this girls boys just forget them so of course we cannot be we cannot be at the level where she was maybe we can come to that standard some point in our life but the point i am trying to stress here is do not become a official practitioner of spiritual practices then you will not gain happiness from the ninth house happiness is the fourth house fourth house is the house of home mother happiness inner heart comforts that you will not get and then the 12th house will continue making losses on your behalf <laughs> all right so that is what i wanted to say that this is how you deal with planets in the 12th house all right and this is universal for any planet Be or even if you don't have any planet because the 12th lord is sitting somewhere okay so especially if malefics are there in the 12th house <laughs> for ladies you should be very careful because this can land you in trouble in some areas especially when dealing with men so whenever i see a malefic in the 12th house for a lady it is my duty to give her caution now some of you will write oh my god i have mars saturn rahu ketu na <laughs> that is why i don't like to say such things because i will say something and then he will extrapolate it 
I am not saying that if a, if any lady has a malefic in the twelfth house, she will be raped or she will be sexually abused. I am not saying that, but I am saying I have seen charts. So be careful. Do not trust anybody in the dark, especially because twelfth house is where everybody is sleeping, right? Nobody can protect you then. All right. So be very vigilant if you are a lady and you have malefics in the twelfth house, especially planets like Mars and Rahu. they are difficult planets for a lady in the 12th house yes and 12th house is also the house of bedroom so there can be bad experiences for ladies which simply means that you should be very realistic when it comes to relationships if there are malefics in the 12th house especially if you're a lady and if you're a man then be careful in dealing with the opposite sex sometimes you may end up doing things which anyways change the topic <laughs> okay so that's what i wanted to say regarding the 12th house so in essence do charity go and help others or give your time to anybody who you think is in need just go and listen to them they will feel good yes and also don't be a official practitioner of spirituality be that kind of a practitioner who says i will practice everything with my heart and soul if my guru has given this mantra i will chant it irrespective of i like it or i don't i will sit there and i will chant it all right if my guru has said that read the gita read the quran read the bible or read the bhagavatam or read the ramayana or read the mahabharat i will do it with all my heart and soul instead of going and reading books like harry potter why don't we read the scriptures Oh my god now somebody will lie how dare you criticize harry potter yes i am criticizing because that will not lead you anywhere yes how in the universe will reading a book why only that book or any book fantasy related to fantasy there was this another movie or book i don't know a 50 shades of gray i don't know i i i i have heard one of my friends said there are so many things written in the book i am like what will you do by reading this The only thing you get by reading sensual novels is disturbance in the mind, because they will put desires. Right? What happens when you read fictional things? Oh, this happened, that happened. Then your mind starts going haywire. Oh shit! Why don't I have that? Yes. So that is all I wanted to say regarding the twelfth house. So protect yourself <laughs> from the twelfth house. pray to god and then things will definitely improve okay if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then subscribe to it somewhere here there and if you want a consultation then please approach me in my website and that's all if you have any questions queries or comments then let me know and if you like this video then click the thumbs up see you again the next time with some other video i don't know this time on which house maybe okay until next time bye bye see you